Tonight on Q2, the dangers behind the derailment. As it heats up in the sun, it gets way sticky. So if it's cold, it's like harder. As it warms up, it's sticky. And you can see all these like bird tracks around it. New pictures coming to light showing the devastating impact the spilled materials may be having on Montana's wildlife. Plus, lighting up the sky. There's more beautiful places in the world, but I find Billings like really intriguing and like really beautiful at the same time. A Billings couple getting creative and using a unique art form to capture the beauty of a Magic City landmark. And the need for speed. Super special because it's just the memories carry on for your whole life. The future of a growing sport on display in Billings. The MPN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Jackie Coffin. Well, new photos like this of a bird surfacing of wildlife dying in asphalt dried along the banks of the Yellowstone River near the site of a train derailment that sent 10 cars tumbling into the river, several of them containing asphalt, sulfur, and other materials. It's been eight days since the Montana Rail Link Bridge collapsed into the river near Reed Point, and officials have been steadfast that this presents no health risks, but these photos raise some important questions. Tonight, our Haley Monaco investigates. It's been eight days since a train derailed and a bridge collapsed into the Yellowstone River, spilling the contents of the train miles downstream. There have been multiple reports of the asphalt being found in clumps. However, I spoke with one woman who found the asphalt melted on top of the surface and she's very concerned about what that means for the river and the wildlife. I care about the Yellowstone River and wildlife. I've lived here my whole life and it matters to me how we treat the river and the ecosystem that we have responsibility for. That's why when Alexis Bonagovsky first heard about the train derailment between Columbus and Reed Point, she felt worried. The Eastern Montana photographer decided to go look downstream to see what she could find. There's asphalt everywhere. It's covering rocks, it's stuck in willows, it's in side channels. Any asphalt that is um, exposed to the sun will oxidize, become more brittle, break up over time, and that's when it gets into the food system. So turtles are at risk, fish are at risk, and macroinvertebrates are at risk. After hearing that the contents spilled into the river were all substances that solidified in cold temperatures, Bonagovsky was disheartened to see this along the banks of the Yellowstone River. As it warms up, it's sticky, and you could see all these like bird tracks around it. You look closer, and there's a kill deer that had gotten stuck and smothered itself basically in the asphalt, and you could tell where it had gone in and tried to keep picking its feet up, and eventually it just couldn't anymore. Instead of reporting to the EPA, she took to her social media with the powerful photos, causing quite a stir. They have experience in these spells. They should have been on those islands, walking those islands. It's not hard to find. You get off your boat and you walk along the edge and you see it. The best way to get action is to alert the public to what's happening. While train cars continue to be taken out of the river, Bonagovsky says more should have been done quicker in regards to downstream along the shoreline. A multi-agency task force managing the derailment says cleanup teams started removing the asphalt material this Sunday. I could have been cleaning it up yesterday with shovels and buckets. The cleanup should have started immediately. In Stillwater County, Haley Monaco, MTN News. We'll get to more news in just one minute as one Billings couple looks to light up the rims. We'll show you how they're doing it. But now it's time to get over to Keith Meyer as he has a first look at the weather on this Sunday. Well, thanks to Deb for this picture from last night from the sunset over the Beartooth. Fantastic colors over the sky there. Might be another one of those again tonight. A thing we're going to look at, uh, concern for moisture Monday night through Tuesday. That's the best shower making weather out there. Everything in green is about a half inch or less during that 24 hour period. Areas in blue generally a half inch to one inch. It's going to be heavier totals confined to like the Bighorns, the Priors, the Beartooth on the front side of that. So the big thing is the snow level 9,000 feet. So if you're planning to get up to the Beartooth Monday night into Tuesday, you might see some snow above 9,000 feet. Things we're going to talk about later in the show, slightly cooler on Monday. Showers likely Monday night into Tuesday. The showers look to be coming to an end Tuesday evening evening. Tuesday could be one of the cooler July 4th we've ever experienced. Details later in the show. 
All the attention over the 4th of July holiday is on fireworks in the sky. But one Billings couple is getting attention for a light display of another kind. They own a production company that creates amazing light photos on the rims. Tonight, our Alina Howder shows us what that is and catches them in action. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. You may or may not be familiar with light painting, using long exposure photography to create scenes while waving around lights like this. Well, one Billings photographer is using the art of light painting to highlight one iconic Billings landmark, creating photos like this. For North Dakota native Daniel Kessel, creativity is his life. I am a creative person, and so finding another outlet to where I could express my creativity and show, like share with others my perspective of the world was really beautiful and I just, I just ate it up. It was that shared love of creativity that united Daniel with his now wife Cassandra here in Montana seven years ago. Montana's my home, it has been for the last seven years and I love it here. Together they formed the team behind Alienated Productions and they're offering the Magic City something a little different. When I found out this new, this crazy technique called light painting, I just saw like there's infinite possibilities with that art form and it just really captured my imagination. Alienated Productions offers services like wedding and commercial photography, but it's Daniel's light painting images that have showcased the beauty of one particular Billings landmark, the rims. I think this is probably one of the most beautiful areas in Billings. And you might have seen his mini light show at night. Hard to imagine that process turns into images like this. It takes a lot of legwork and you do have to scout all the nooks and crannies around Billings, but there's lots of hidden gems. But the art form isn't without its challenges or critiques. Some people are really skeptical and they say, oh, you just did that in Photoshop, where it's obviously all in camera. Some people say it's not really photography, um, which I don't understand because it's like at its purest form. Those skeptics are are what challenges Daniel to push the boundaries when it comes to creativity, especially since he's doing something he loves. I just get to like kind of unwind, be outside under the stars when it's generally quiet, the world slows down, and just create art. And I just really enjoy that. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Montana lawmakers have failed to override Governor Greg Gianforte's decision to veto several projects from a long-range spending bill. That news, released late last week, resolved one of the final open questions remaining after the 68th legislative session. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Amberian has a full breakdown. Since the end of the 2023 legislative session in early May, lawmakers have been voting by mail in a series of polls to see whether they'll overturn vetoes from Governor Greg Gianforte. The last of those polls currently scheduled wrapped up on Thursday. Lawmakers had to vote separately on 11 different line items that Gianforte rejected in House Bill 5, a major capital spending bill. None of them received the two-thirds of the House and Senate needed to override the vetoes. The closest vote was on a $6 million appropriation to complete a sixth and final skilled nursing cottage at the Southwest Montana Veterans Home in Butte. It fell short by more than 20 votes. Gianforte said the project was worthy, but he wanted to seek more federal funding for it instead of using all state money. In a statement Friday, Democratic Senator Ryan Lynch of Butte said it was an insulting decision and kicking veterans to the curb. Senate Majority Leader Steve Fitzpatrick, a Republican from Great Falls, had encouraged Gianforte to use his line-item veto power to remove several projects from HB5, saying he objected to the way they were added into the bill at the end of the session. In total, Gianforte vetoed 25 bills this session. Of those, 19 were submitted to lawmakers for an override poll. The legislature voted to enact four of them into law over the governor's objections. One of those bills said public agencies can't withhold information just because it may be part of litigation. Two revised laws related to the Montana State Hospital. The fourth contains coordinating language that goes along with Senate Bill 442, a bill Gianforte vetoed that would have revised distribution of state marijuana tax revenue. SB 442 passed the legislature with broad support, but didn't get an override poll because the veto came just before the end of the session. Lawsuits have been filed saying that that deprived lawmakers of their opportunity to decide whether to uphold the veto. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, Ready, Set, Go! The future of motocross on display in Billings this weekend. We'll take you to the Speedway next.